sunny day in New Mexico. When does it start? Any minute now. Greetings, planet Earth, and welcome to Spaceport America, the beautiful home of Virgin Galactic in Sierra County, New Mexico, and the stage for today's momentous occasion. I'm delighted you can join us for an historic day. Over the next few hours, you'll see live coverage of today's space flight, unprecedented access inside the spacecraft, and a live performance of a brand new song by multi-platinum artist Khalid. Entrepreneur. Philanthropist, iconoclast, activist, adventurer, billionaire, goatee host organism. Later today, Richard Branson and his crew will return to Earth as astronauts. Hello, everyone. I'm Stephen Colbert. Thank you for joining us. Earlier this morning, Richard Branson and his crew arrived at Spaceport America, ready to embark on a life-changing journey. When Richard called me and asked me if I'd like to host today's live stream, I said, who is this? And how did you get my number? Then he said who it was, explained today's flight test mission, and I said, yes, I would be honored to host your launch. After all, I've known Richard for years. I've never been to his private island, but that's okay. That's how close we are. Friends don't have to ask friends to their private island, evidently. And to be fair, it might be because I've spent most of our friendship making fun of him on TV. Long-time viewers of this broadcast know that I have an ongoing feud with Sir Richard Branson, Virgin CEO and adult of the corn, Richard Branson. <laughs> Sir Big Baby here. <laughs> having what some critics have called facial hair. <laughs> that little tree sloth clinging to your chin. <laughs> the grinning goat man. <laughs> A cross between David Bowie and Pam the goat god. <laughs> <laughs> his airline but <laughs> well, obviously I said all of that in character on a comedy show so Richard I want you to know as myself sincerely I meant every word but there is one thing Richard and I do have in common a deep, lifelong passion for space exploration. That's why Richard founded Virgin Galactic in 2004 with the dream of sending private citizens into space. Now, to do that, he needed to build every part of a whole new industry. He had to construct a spacecraft capable of the journey. Then, to launch these space planes, he had to help create the world's first commercial spaceport. And most importantly, he had to find the people capable of turning his dream into a reality, as well as people brave enough to get on a spaceship built by the guy who launched a soda this awful. Seriously, he lost money selling sugar water. All aboard! Today marks the culmination of Branson's dream. He and his crew will set off on a supersonic voyage in which they'll achieve a maximum velocity of more than Mach 3.5 and ultimately enter zero gravity. Imagine staring out the window the vast expanse of space and seeing Earth below, our beautiful blue planet staring back. Unless, of course, you're the guy in the middle seat. Then you have to ask the astronaut sitting next to the window to put it all in perspective for you. Oh, and I'm being told that there are no middle seats in space. Thank you, science. It's been a dream of mine to go into space ever since I was a child. Unfortunately, I cannot be on the spacecraft today. I had a thing. Also, I was not technically invited, but Richard was generous enough to give me a spacecraft of my very own. And I will be using this model to give scientifically accurate play-by-play -play of today's historic events, as well as doing this. The Virgin Galactic crew are an inspiration an inspiration to be bold, to be audacious, and to never give up in the pursuit of even your wildest dreams. 
So let's now take you to where the action is happening, live in the studio at Spaceport America, where your other co-hosts are standing by. First, one of the newest members of the Virgin Galactic team. She's a science author, an expert in space exploration, a bioastronautic researcher, and most impressively, a TikTok star. Kelly Girardi. Great to have you here, Kelly. Next up, a man who has flown two space shuttle missions and spent time on the International Space Station where he served as commander and performed a viral David Bowie cover. Here he is, the first man to do open mic in zero G, Chris Hadfield. Welcome, Chris. And finally, your mission host for today, she's a structures operations engineer for Virgin Galactic and fun fact, actually got married in the spaceship that will be taking the crew up today, Veronica McGowan. So now I turn it over to Veronica, Chris, and Kelly for more on today's historic flight. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with you all live from Spaceport America. It's a momentous day for Sir Richard Branson, a milestone for Virgin Galactic, and a historic event for the future of spaceflight. Just seven weeks ago, Virgin Galactic completed the first ever human spaceflight from the great state of New Mexico. And today, our founder and his crew will become some of the very few people to have experienced space travel. Let's take a look at how they arrived to Spaceport America. Good morning, Unity 22. Welcome to Spaceport. Please sign in to the astronaut logbook. The name's Branson, Sir Richard Branson. Astronaut 001, license to thrill. Astronaut 002. Beth Moses. Astronaut 003, Colin Bennett. What a beautiful guy. Sarisha. Astronaut 004, Sarisha Bamlow. And she's astronaut 004. Congratulations, Unity 22. You are officially registered for space. See you up there. What a way to start off your journey, first on a bike and now on a spaceship. The team is airborne. Here's some footage of them taking off just moments ago. The spaceflight system was towed out to the runway and elegantly took to the skies on what is a beautiful morning here in the state of New Mexico. They're at approximately 30,000 feet in altitude and climbing as we speak. Our spaceflight system is comprised of two vehicles in a mated configuration. Our mothership Eve, named thoughtfully by Richard after his his late mother Eve and Spaceship Unity, named by the late Stephen Hawking as a vehicle that will unite the world through space. Of, of commercial space flight, of people being able to fly in space, I mean, since the very first pioneers started flying, the X-15, which was the wonderful program in the 60s, was so much like the profile that they're gonna follow today. And then the Ansari X Prize, to try and, and push the limits that, that is very much the, the DNA that's, that's on this bottle, in fact, the DNA that has allowed this vehicle to fly. And it, it is like all of those pioneers and the, the flight today 
uh, you know, they, they pried the door open initially, but this crew today is really pushing it open permanently. And I, I'm, I'm really excited for the flight, but I think it's so significant professionally, technically, but personally for the people on board. Absolutely, and you mentioned opening up that doorway. Kelly, you're one of the people that's gonna be going through that doorway soon. We are so thrilled to have you here to get a preview of what you're gonna experience on a Virgin Galactic mission in the not too distant future. You gotta be getting pretty excited, right? Incredibly excited. You know, this is an emotional day, right? Those doors are opening for the next generation of astronauts. I feel like we have front row seats to the final frontier today, and I'm so excited to get a taste of what I'm gonna experience soon. Definitely. Well, I'm so thrilled to have you here. And you too, Chris. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this. Let's take a look at what we've got in store for the live stream. So while Mothership Eve is transporting Spaceship Unity to the launch point, we'll check in with the crew and the preparations that went into today's flight. We'll also share some perspective on the Virgin Galactic mission, so who we are, what we do, and our vision for commercial space travel in the 21st century. Next, we'll give you a guided tour through the Virgin Galactic experience, showing you what our astronauts will see and do throughout their stay, both on the ground and on their life-changing journey into space. Once we've reached the launch altitude and location, we'll see the moment when Spaceship Unity is released from Mothership Eve and accelerates into space, all coming to you live. So there's some incredible energy building here at Spaceport, and we're happy to have have some special guests on site taking in this experience. My co-host Kevin. Kevin, what's the vibe like down there? Thanks, Veronica. I am currently here at Spaceport America's hangar floor, where the ships usually reside. But as you just saw, they're on their way to space. Right behind me, I have the rocket motors we use for launch. And to my left, a very important person, CEO of Virgin Galactic, Michael Cole Glazer. Michael, good to see you. It's great to be here, Kevin. Michael, I have one question for you, and that is, what does today mean? Kevin, this is a landmark moment for Virgin Galactic. It's a landmark moment for the new commercial space industry, and it certainly is a landmark moment for our founder, Sir Richard Branson, who right now is showing that when you have the fortitude to follow your dream, you can make a hugely profound impact on the world. It's a historic moment, because today we are endeavoring to open access to space for all. Can you imagine being up there and looking back down has to be one of the most amazing feelings, and we can't wait for more people to experience it. I have to say how proud I am, Kevin, to have all my friends and colleagues who are today's crew representing the entire company. They're opening the door for the astronauts of tomorrow. We're thrilled to be here today and so excited to have all of you watching to be sharing this moment with us. It surely really is a historical moment for us, and I'm excited to be here. I'm gonna be out in the street, so I'll see you guys in a little bit, but we're gonna send it back to you. Virgin Galactic's mission of sending humans into space requires tenacity, innovation, and an unparalleled drive to succeed. Turns out pioneering a new form of space travel is a tough job, possibly even tougher than my job where I talk to celebrities for one hour a day. But the Virgin Galactic space is to make space itself more accessible and approachable. Line three. Hello. Hi. Um, have you ever thought about going to, into space, Richard? <laughs> um. The moon landing was a catalytic moment for me. I remember my dad taking me outside onto the village green and we just looked up at the moon. I really did think that myself and many other young people would one day be able to go into space. I waited and I waited and waited for that opportunity, and it never came. They got me thinking. I went to the registry office and I registered the name Virgin Galactic Airways. It's a brilliant innovation story. The origins of spaceflight at the time, it was big government. The XPRIZE was a chance to turn that into a much more personal spaceflight experience. Spaceship One claimed the XPRIZE and it proved the dream was possible. This was the first private venture to go to space, return safely, and do it again just two weeks later. And then from there, we just started expanding. We knew we wanted a bigger system. We wanted something that you could float about the cabin, actually experience zero gravity. Virgin Galactic offers the first real platform where we can actually open it up to make space for all of us. We build on the shoulders of giants. 
but we want to be that first baseline for Earth and actually deliver on that promise. We are changing the way humanity views space. We've taken the impossible and we're making it inevitable. I always want to celebrate the team on this. You need heart, you need the best minds, you need the best humans to work on programs like this. The sky is no longer the limit for us. This is an inflection point in human history. Two astronauts on a tiny television inspired a kid from England. Imagine what greatness can come from a generation seeing Earth from space. You're seeing your home planet. It's a real connection with the Earth. It grounds you and it feels timeless. I think in the same way that I was inspired by the moon landing. that there would be another world who would be captivated and inspired about the possibility of them going to space one day. Have you ever thought about going to, into space, Richard? <laughs> I'd love to go into space. I think there could, be, there could be nothing nicer. So if you're building a spacecraft, I'd love to come with you on it. truly inspirational and right now all of that inspiration is up in the sky as the Virgin Galactic Space Flight Mission makes its way towards the launch point. Let's take a look at these onboard camera footages now and see what we've got here. We are already at 40,000 feet. You can already see the incredible view and the sky starting to darken there. This is already higher than what most regular commercial airliners will travel at. Um, so I'm sure all of our astronauts are taking in that view already and getting really excited and prepared for the mission. Now, Kelly, we hope to connect live with Richard um, throughout the show here. What would be going through your mind if you were on board with him right now? Gosh, you know, aside from the overwhelming excitement, right, I, I think it would just be a sense of awe, the hard work and the vision that it took to get to today, and the magnitude of what it means for the next generation of humans who are going to experience the wonder of space flight. Absolutely. I mean, this is certainly the dawn of a new space age. And Mothership Eve is currently ascending still. We're already over 40,000 feet. Um, our target launch altitude for today is 45,000 feet. But in addition to that launch altitude, uh, we also have a designated release point within the airspace. So while you may see us get to altitude rather quickly, we'll continue to complete our flight path until we get to that designated launch point. So everything is looking really good. Um, again, they're over 40,000 feet now. And just a beautiful view you get there already. I imagine that they're just getting really excited for their upcoming space flight. So speaking of the crew on board, let's take a look at the folks in flight today. Virgin Galactic pilots are without a doubt among the very best of the best. They're some of the most experienced pilots in the world and there are very few flying machines on Earth or off Earth that these professionals haven't flown. In fact, four of our pilots are among the very few in history who can lay claim to the title of astronaut. And two of them are heading to space again today. Let's meet the crew now. We'll begin with the folks who are supporting today's flight in the chase plane, giving us visuals on the space flight system while airborne. Pilot in command of our chase plane today is Jamil Janjua. He's completed over 4,000 flying hours in 48 different vehicles throughout his career, which spans over 20 years in the Royal Canadian Air Force. Joining Jamil is Patrick Moran, who served as a pilot in the Marine Corps for 20 years, where he operated as a test pilot and a test pilot school instructor. He joins Virgin Galactic with over 3,000 flight hours in 34 different aircraft. In Mothership Eve today, we have CJ Sturkow in the left seat. CJ has completed four NASA Space Shuttle missions and two Spaceship Unity space flights. He's been flying for 37 years and is the first person to enter space from three different states. CJ is joined by Kelly Latimer in the right seat, who's logged more than 6,700 hours in her 32-year flying career. And Kelly is also a pilot with Virgin Orbit, our sister space company, and she just flew their successful launch the other week. Piloting Spaceship Unity today, we have our chief pilot and astronaut, Dave Mackay. 
Dave's been with Virgin Companies for over 25 years now and has more than 14,000 hours of flight time to his credit. Just incredible and spanning no fewer than 140 different types of aircraft. With Dave is astronaut Mike Masucci. Mike recently passed more than 10,000 hours of log flight in a career that's put him in the cockpit of more than 80 different types of aircraft, including the U-2 and of course, our very own Spaceship Unity. As you can see, our passengers today will be flown to space by some of the most accomplished and experienced pilots in the world. And in the cabin of Spaceship Unity today, there are four mission specialists. Let's hear some more about them now. Astronaut 004, Sarisha Bamla. I'll be testing the researcher experience. Virgin Galactic is opening up the opportunity to go to space for everyone. Everyone. This is a whole new era to get people from different backgrounds, different geographies, different communities into space. And it's giving researchers the opportunity to fly with their payloads. And that is unheard of. They can take the work that they've been doing on Earth to space. And I'm so excited to see where the community takes it in the future. Astronaut 003, Colin Bennett. I'll be evaluating cabin procedures during boost and weightlessness. When I was younger, I assumed that space was only available to a very select few. I had no idea myself that I would ever be in a position to, to go to space, but, but here I am. And how awesome it's gonna be to, uh, to be a part of the, the journey of opening this up to hundreds and then thousands of more people in the future. Astronaut 002, Beth Moses. I'll be spaceship cabin lead and test director. I cannot remember not dreaming of going to space. It was the little tiny kid looking up at the stars, the little girl making model rockets. It just was part of my childhood. I think it's a very natural, human, innate curiosity. We're all explorers and adventurers, so I really don't remember an age or a moment where I discovered space. I just always remember dreaming of going to space. Astronaut 001, Richard Branson. I'll be evaluating the customer space flight experience. Astronaut 001, what a title to have. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited to hear who gets the spot of 007 as well. <laughs> So let's hear more about the man who has the license to thrill. Now say what you want about Richard Branson, and I have. He has left an indelible mark in the world of business, travel, and entertainment. And it's all been fueled by his restless sense of adventure. And where did Richard get that intrepid spirit? His mother, Eve Branson. She taught Richard to be bold, to be brave, and Richard knows for many reasons today would not be possible without Eve, and he's penned a special letter in tribute to her. Dear Mum, you always told me to reach for the stars. Well, I took my own winding road, but I always knew to follow your lead. You always pushed us to our limits. When I was a child, you threw me out of the car miles from our house and urged me to find my own way home. You let me jump into a river to sink or swim. You and Dad taught me and my sisters independence and loved us with fierceness and tenderness. You were always an adventurer. You took glider lessons dressed as a boy, enlisted during World War II, toured Germany as a ballet dancer after the war. You flew treacherous routes as intrepid cabin crew for startup airlines. You took us into the great unknown on family holidays. You treated every day as a chance to explore. Before the word existed, you were always an entrepreneur. You helped make ends meet by creating your own small businesses. You showed me how to grow a company, how to treat people, how to be creative, how to balance work and play, how to live. You were always a romantic. You and Dad showed Joan and me the way to build a life filled with humor and heart, hope and humility, honesty and happiness. You showed us the value of kindness, the magic of laughter, the beauty of music, 
and the joy of family. You were always my guiding light at Virgin Galactic. You shared with me that the day we named our mothership BMS Eve was one of your happiest. You always knew Eve would start my journey to space one day, just as I always knew you would do the impossible for me. Well, Mum, a mothership which carries your name will carry the next generation of dreamers into space. You were always a dreamer. You urged me to strive for every opportunity I saw. You told me to chase my wildest fantasies and to live life to the full. Well, the brave may not live forever, but the cautious do not live at all. How you lived, how you loved, and how you are missed. Dad always said, isn't life wonderful? And you both showed us it was. Such a beautiful letter. Um, Eve Branson really was an inspiration to all of us here at Virgin Galactic. If you're just now tuning in, my name is Veronica McGowan. I'm a structures operations engineer here at Virgin Galactic. Alongside me is astronaut Chris Hadfield and future astronaut Kelly Girardi. So great to have you guys here. Earlier today, we saw Richard and his crew make their way down to the astronaut walkway at Spaceport America, seeing their families off before they were escorted to our space flight system, where final inspections and preparations were made before takeoff. They were driven to the runway and our fleet of Land Rovers, and Land Rover is our exclusive automotive partner, and they help with day-to-day -day operations. And in fact, we have a bespoke vehicle that we designed with them called the Astronaut Edition. And this is exclusively available to Virgin Galactic future astronauts, and it's the one that drove Richard to, spaceport, um, to Spaceship Unity this morning. So we're delighted to have Land Rover as a part of the team. And right now, our crew are on their way to space. Let's check in on them via our onboard camera footage. Wow, look at that view already, and you can see some contrails. Chris, how do you think the crew will be feeling right about now? Uh, so many different things at once. They're, they're just about leveled off at altitude, right up at 46,000 feet. Um, but inside their bodies, they've got like this tug of war going on because they're focused. Like there's no more focused, you know, the four in the back and the two in the front really focused. But at the same time, there's this like rising excitement that, that you can feel like, like a thermometer going up inside your own body. But I remember at the time, I, what I really wanted to do was go back to my nine-year-old self and just run around the cockpit and scream and wave my hands because it's just so exciting and fun. They're focused, they're professional, they're doing their job, but it's just a magnificent moment as we get ready for ignition. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's certainly a mixture of excitement and anticipation with our crew today, um, but they will all be focused on the task at hand, as you said, and preparing themselves to run through their individual test points. And on the subject of testing, today's space flight is an opportunity for us to evaluate our cabin experience. It's the environment where our passengers will cross the 50 mile border defined by NASA as the entry to space. Let's hear more about the transformative journey that our crew are on. Ah! Ah! You shall, oh, hello. I was just contemplating in the wonder of innovation. You know, back in 1860, it took 10 days for the Pony Express to deliver a letter from a toilet while they vacation on the other side of the world. Progress. But while some technology has grown exponentially, others have remained practically the same. Planes still travel at the same speed they did 50 years ago. We still use the same ground launch system from the early days of space travel, and they haven't come out with a new snow cone machine in years. That's where the innovations of Virgin Galactic come in. What does space flight with Virgin Galactic entail? Well, it has a unique combination of revolutionary design innovations that make it like no other vehicle that has ever gone before. Firstly, air launch. 
Most rockets you see make a loud and bumpy vertical launch from the ground. To launch from the ground requires huge amounts of energy to lift the vehicle from a static start and to propel it through the thickest parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Instead, Virgin Galactic spaceflight starts with a smooth runway takeoff, not dissimilar to a conventional commercial airliner. The spaceship, attached to a mothership, gracefully ascends to the launch altitude of around 50,000 feet, bypassing the thickest parts of the Earth's atmosphere, making it far more energy efficient and far more comfortable for the passengers inside. When the vehicles have reached the launch altitude and location, Mission Control provides clearance for release. Release, release, release. The pilots activate the launch and set spaceship free. Within seconds, the rocket motor ignites as the vehicle starts its rapid ascent toward the stars. During this awe-inspiring journey, the spaceship reaches speeds of up to three times the speed of sound. And out the window, passengers will watch the color change from blue through indigo and then to the iconic inky black as they soar into space. Once the rocket motor shuts down, passengers will unbuckle their seatbelts and float effortlessly around the cabin, enjoying the childlike freedom of zero gravity. The cabin becomes a spacious, three-dimensional playground as passengers experience space firsthand, helmet-free. The ship has an incredible 17 windows, and passengers won't be able to resist being drawn towards the undeniable, euphoric beauty that lies beneath as planet Earth looks right back at them in all her majesty. Whilst enjoying weightlessness and the life-changing view, the vehicle is preparing itself for re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere, utilizing the second design innovation of Virgin Galactic's space system, the Feather. There's Epigees. Re-entry is arguably the most challenging aspect of space travel and has largely been approached in two ways, with winged vehicles or with capsule spacecraft. The revolutionary aspect of Virgin Galactic Feather technology is that it enables the vehicle to act like a winged vehicle when it is advantageous to be a winged vehicle and then behave as a capsule when a capsule design gives you the advantage. On the way to space, the spaceship folds in half, with the booms moving upward to a 60-degree position as our pilots put the vehicle into an elegant backflip. This points the windows straight back towards Earth, offering passengers astounding and unobstructed views. This maneuver also allows the vehicle to behave like a capsule on re-entry, spreading the friction heat generated from re-entering the Earth's atmosphere across the entire underside of the spaceship and aerodynamically enabling it to reorient itself from any position. Once the ship has slowed down and starts to travel through the thicker parts of the Earth's atmosphere, where a winged vehicle is advantageous for maneuverability, the booms come back down from their feather position and the spaceship gently glides back home safely and smoothly, ensuring a thrilling yet comfortable ride for those on board and landing on the same runway it took off from. A truly extraordinary design fit for an out-of-this-world experience. Wow, that is some next-level space engineering. I love how its re-entry is feathered, just like Richard's hair. And I imagine it must be a, an emotional and life-changing moment to experience zero-G and see our fragile planet floating in the depths of space. I would go up in a minute if my wife would let me. How about you, Veronica? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that would be an offer too good to refuse. Now, Chris, I'm sure you'd agree that the experience that Richard is having right now is probably a lot more comfortable than your launches. Yeah, I had a chance to fly as part of the space shuttle crew twice, and then I flew on the Russian ship as the pilot once, and it's a little capsule, like they were talking about winged and capsule vehicles, but both of them needed a rocket to get them up above the atmosphere, and the beauty of what uh, Sir Richard and his crew are doing now is that they've had the mothership Eve to carry them gently up, so yeah, they're much more comfortable than I was at this stage, getting ready for, for the second 
engine and the, uh, the rockets to ignite there. Yeah, I can imagine. And Kelly, now I know you've experienced zero G already in some parabolic flights. Your space flight will surely be an extension, right, of that zero G time. What are you most looking forward to in terms of conducting experiments in that environment? Yeah, exactly. Like Veronica said, I've done a number of parabolic research flights here on Earth where the aircraft takes this roller coaster profile to simulate zero G seconds at a time. But during a dedicated research mission with Virgin Galactic, I am most looking forward to that continuous, uninterrupted minutes worth of microgravity exposure to do my experiments. It's just an unprecedented time. The next generation of researchers and scientists are going to be flying with their payloads. And I'm so excited for what's to come. Yes, definitely excited for your space flight, and I'm very excited that people can experience, you know, not only that personal transformation on space flights, but also conduct scientific research. So it's a really flexible platform. Um, I, am here, I am hearing from our Mission Control Center now that we are about six and a half minutes out to release. We're getting pretty close. So let's go ahead and switch over to our onboard camera footage for the whole portion of the flight here until landing. Um, I am hearing we're in the middle of our L minus 10 checks. Um, and L minus 10, it means we're approximately 10 minutes out from the moment when Mothership Eve releases Spaceship Unity. And this is based on an estimated time of arrival to that release point. So timing may vary a little bit, uh, but the closer we get to that point, the more accurate here at the estimate becomes and right now we're about six minutes out so up until l minus 10 eve is in full mothership mode carrying spaceship unity to altitude and providing her um, you know through essentially an umbilical cord with electrical power system heat and cabin pressurization and this air is conditioned so we can keep folks cool on the ground for hot summer days like today and heat it at high altitudes where things get a little bit cooler to keep the pilots and the passengers comfortable So at L minus 10, Spaceship Unity switches to her own battery power for avionics and control systems and performs electrical checks, feather system checks, flight control checks, and more. And about each stack, uh, each check here. You know, these days, more and more systems are becoming automated, um, especially in aircraft and spacecraft. And what's really exciting about the Virgin Galactic Space Flight System is that our crew truly are hands-on with the piloting throughout the flight. Oh, there's Sir Richard Branson now. That's so exciting to see them in the back. I'm sure they are just getting incredibly excited. And of course, as mentioned earlier, we have Dave and Mike up front. We have an amazing team of pilots here, and you know they just love to pilot a vehicle that is arguably the most exciting vehicle in the world to fly. And I imagine you know this also provides passengers with an additional level of comfort, knowing they have crew members with them throughout the duration of the flight. There they are again, just moments away at this point. It's looking like we're about four minutes and 20 seconds out now. All right, so I am hearing from our Mission Control Center that we have L minus four checks in work now, so we just passed the four minute mark. At this point, the pilots are ensuring the spaceship is in its launch configuration after going through the various L minus 10 checks, just confirming all settings are back in their place and go for launch. And this is also the point when Spaceship Unity will isolate her air supply from EVE and prime the rocket motor by opening the backup oxidizer valve. And once these actions are complete, the pilots are gonna seek clearance for release from MCC. And that's shorthand for our Mission Control Center. We have two MCCs supporting today. Our primary horizon is located here at Spaceport America, and they're being supported by the Oculus Mission Control Center at our manufacturing base in Mojave, California. These teams consist of experts across various departments and disciplines within the company, and they're verifying checks with the crew today every step of the way. All right, and I've just heard from MCC that our L minus four checks are complete. We are roughly three minutes out from release at this point. It's getting really exciting. It I is. don't know about you all, but I can feel the anticipation building just watching the screen and looking at their faces. Look at that, they've already got big smiles on. 
And we have just received clearance for release on time for Mission Control Center. So we are two minutes and 30 seconds out now. Uh, I can only imagine what it would be like to be on board. This must be incredibly exciting for the crew. We're about two minutes out now, and once we get to the 30-second point, Spaceship Unity is going to arm the launch pylon. And then once we get to that designated point, the mothership pilots are actually the ones that engage the release, setting Unity free. So we have actions for both the mothership pilots and the spaceship pilots, so they're in coordination, and all agree on the launch. Yeah, it's a hugely exciting and focused moment right now. Definitely. One minute and 30 seconds. The spaceship pilots are also going to push the stick all the way forward to prepare for release. And things happen pretty quickly after the release. So the pilots are going to light the rocket motor and they're going to accelerate in level flight until they reach Mach 1, at which point they'll start what we call the gamma turn, where we turn directly up and head to space. One minute to release now. It's getting real. <laughs> so exciting. Forty five seconds. Thirty seconds. The spaceship Unity pilots are arming the launch pylon now. We are armed for release. Twenty seconds. Ten seconds. Five, three, two, one. Release, release, release. Clean release. Ignition. Good rocket motor burn. There's Mach 1 trimming now. Trim complete, Unity is pointed directly up and heading to space. Things are looking great. We are 25 seconds into the burn now, approaching Mach 2. 30 seconds, Mach 2. Everything's looking really good and stable. 40 seconds. 45 seconds. Fifty seconds approaching Mach three. There's Mach three. And sixty seconds, and that is a full duration burn, folks. We are headed to space. And the passengers in the back have been cleared to unstrap. Our predicted apogee is two hundred and seventy nine thousand feet and climbing. The pilots are now unlocking the feather and um, as soon as they do that, it's going to initiate a backflip for Spaceship Unity. This is normal. We want those windows pointed down towards the Earth to maximize that incredible view. So Feather is coming up now, and the pilots are also enabling the RCS, or Reaction Control System, which is what they'll use to control the attitude of the vehicle while we're outside the atmosphere. All right, Feather is all the way up. We are at about 250,000 feet now and climbing as soon as we cross the boundary to space. We'll hear a word from our founder, Sir Richard Branson. We Welcome to space, Unity 22.
So it doesn't sound like we're talking about cameras, uh, recording things on board today, and we'll be sure to capture his magical words and share them with the world when they're available. We reached Apogee 282,000 feet. Remember the day, remember where you are, and remember who you shared this with, and remember the name Virgin Galactic, because today, space is virgin territory. The culmination of a life's work, more than a half a century since the world rejoiced in and was transformed by humans leaving planet Earth, Sir Richard Branson fulfills his long-held dream of experiencing space with his crew. Congratulations again, Richard, and congratulations also to Sarisha and Colin on becoming astronauts today. And welcome back to space to Dave, Mike, and Beth. Oh, you can see him now. So we are on the re-entry portion of our flight now, and the mission specialists are heading back to their seats. Our training team has worked really hard on this portion of the flight to make it very natural and intuitive for passengers. Now, when we talk about space travel, a lot of people know and expect the boost portion of the flight to be loud and thrilling, uh, but what's interesting is re-entry is also very similar as supersonic air is flowing over the vehicle in the feathered configuration, shock waves form on top of the cabin, which are audible to those inside. And for those of you on site watching on the ground, you should be able to hear a double sonic boom as Spaceship Unity once again breaks the sound barrier. All right, folks, we are now subsonic, just under 75,000 feet in altitude. Now also note too, this is our first time transmitting HD camera data down to the ground and then out to a global live stream. Uh, so please do maybe see some drops in the feed, but we still have some really great uh, ground footage coming in here. Oh, there we go. Now we can see that is the tail cone of Unity. And the pilots are lowering the feather now. Now, as the feather comes down, the nose of spaceship is going to drop. This is normal and expected. Once that feather is down and locked, the pilots will begin a gentle pull up to a level attitude. And I'm hearing the feather is down and locked now. So at this point, Spaceship Unity is a glider, so it's all about balancing her potential and kinetic energy. So if the pilots want to go faster, they point the nose down. And if they want to go slower, they bring the nose up. And right now I'm hearing the crews listening to a special soundtrack for the glide. It's the latest release from Khalid, a track called New Normal. And all of us will get to hear that on Earth during our celebration, so stick around for that. I don't know about you all, but I am still feeling overwhelmed and excited about what we just witnessed. And there's one person in particular who's got to be having all of the feels right now. You can see him sending a congratulatory shake to his passenger, Colin Bennett, there with him. Let's see if we can connect with the crew again here. He's a manual dump to 200. So Richard, you just went to space. This has got to be the ultimate birthday present for you. What was it like? Yeah. 
All right, folks, again, sorry, we're, we're not getting that transmission through the live broadcast, but again, we do have lots of recording devices aboard the spaceship, and we will be sure to release some footage of Richard and the crew up there today. All right, so I'm still happy we could catch a little part of that. It seems like there's a little bit of a delay in the transmission there. It does have a long way to travel. Um, but you could tell by the smiles on their faces, they just had the ride of their lives. We are so excited for them to land and party the rest of the day with, like astronauts, in the typical Virgin fashion. So we are at 22,000 feet now and descending. And as I mentioned earlier, Unity is a glider at this point. Um, so the pilots right now are discussing their energy management plan. And pretty shortly here, they'll be meeting up with our Chase aircraft with Jamil and Patrick to get some really cool visuals of Spaceship Unity. Now, as the crew and spaceship make their way across the desert, they are gliding over one of the most remarkable landscapes in the United States and the largest desert in North America, the Chihuahuan Desert. The area around Spaceport includes more than 6,000 square miles of restricted airspace and high desert, which is one of the reasons it was built here. And of course, our future astronauts will be able to take in so much of that natural beauty and, you know, of course, we also have White Sands nearby. White Sands National Park is just to our east. It's visible right over the Black Range Mountains. White Sands, of course, has been the backdrop for so many films, commercials, and music videos, and it's known for having the largest gypsum dune field on the planet. So also nearby is the Oregon Mountain Desert Peaks National Monument, and that's nearly half a million acres of protected land that our guest families will be able to experience. And even though temperatures can hit the triple digits in the summer here, we also have cool desert days. And fortunately, our pilots and crew can stay comfortable thanks to their spacesuits. They were designed with our technical spacewear partner, Under Armour, and they're absolutely beautiful, as you can see on the crew there. They're lightweight and made of flight grid knitted fabrics, um, which forms the spacesuit and also helps regulate their body temperature. So also to commemorate this flight from New Mexico, we reached out to the Zia Pueblo, who gave us permission to use their sun symbol on our spaceship. This symbol is also a part of the New Mexico state flag, and it's embedded with symbolic meaning. The number four is sacred to the Zia people, and the emblem represents the four directions, the four seasons, the four times of day, and the four phases of life. We are honored and proud to feature this perfectly balanced symbol on Spaceship Unity's tail cone, as we also celebrate our new home. Oh, you can see the chase in the background there outside of Richard's window. 
The pilots are coordinating with Chase now and discussing their energy management plan. They're at about 9,500 feet in altitude, and the runway out here at Spaceport America is around 4,600 feet in altitude. All right, we have three landing gear down and locked. Now the pilots are gonna be landing on runway three, four today. So that's coming from the south and towards the north for those of you on site watching. And for the non-pilots tuning in, those numbers represent the first two numbers of the magnetic heading of the runway. So for example, three, four is 340 degrees on your compass. We are just about a thousand feet above the field now and on final. 500 feet above the runway, 300 feet. Over the threshold. Main gear touchdown. And we're gonna hold it just like this for a minute before bringing the nose down. Can see they're already celebrating inside there. And the nose is coming down now. Nose gear touchdown. And braking. that incredible drone footage here as we come in and there is full stop All right. a perfect landing virgin galactic or mission specialist on board from our operational home base spaceport america a beautiful day of flight what a moment Congratulations to everybody on board and of course our very own Spaceship Unity who returned to space today. And of course we also saw beautiful flying from our EVE crew, CJ and Kelly, and brilliant work by our chase pilots, Jamil and Patrick, all of whom are still in the air right now. Great job to you all. Ladies and gentlemen, there it is. More than half a century since the world rejoiced when humans first achieved space flight, Richard Branson fulfills his dream of experiencing space travel. Congratulations to Richard and Virgin Galactic. Congratulations also to Colin Bennett and Sarisha Bandla on becoming astronauts. And also a welcome back to space for David Mackay, Mike Masucci, and Beth Moses. Well, stay tuned, folks. We will be hearing more from our astronauts later in the broadcast, and we also have a special musical performance to celebrate today's milestone. But first, let's hear some thoughts on the flight. Chris, you've returned from space several times now, both on a capsule and a space shuttle. Uh, how does this landing compare to the landings you've experienced? Well, obviously, that, that's a much more gentle landing than a capsule. Uh, on my Soyuz flight. Uh, the shuttle two times was quite similar to what the crew had just went through. But for them, of course, it's such a personal experience now. And, and what are they gonna do with this? How are they gonna take this amazing view of the Earth that they've just had and the, the, the kind of brave new nature of what this whole team has just accomplished? How are they gonna now make that part of who they are and how are they going to share this experience with other people you know that's what's going through their minds right now i'm just so proud of the whole team that was an amazing accomplishment it was epic and you know as somebody who has spent what like four thousand hours in space is it yeah <laughs> how do you feel about you know a space line for the earth opening it's it's what uh, what I've been hoping that we've been able to do ever since I was a little kid dreaming about it and, and uh, during my space flights so that 
the technology gets good enough and someone has the tenacity and the vision to push beyond all the resistance and the naysayers and to create a capability for, you don't have to be a professional astronaut for your whole life to see the world this way. I think, I mean, I, I just couldn't be more proud of all the people that work at Virgin Galactic and I'm just so delighted at what this open door is gonna lead to now. It's a great moment. Absolutely, certainly. And Kelly, I want to hear your thoughts too. And you know, also your daughter Delta V, who is on site today, is also she's only three, and she's also a huge space enthusiast, just like you. Um, and you know, how does this this milestone affect her and mean? What does that mean for her and also for you? Yeah, I, I am still emotional from this flight. It is so amazing. Not a dry eye in the studio, but. You know, when I think of my daughter on site, just like you said, it's like, this is what it's all about. You know, it means the world to me that not only that she was here to witness history today, but that she's gonna watch me, her mom, become an astronaut. You know, that's gonna be normal in her mind. That's just another thing moms do. Of course, they go to space. You know, and I, I just think that's incredible. She's gonna grow up knowing that not even the sky is a limit. And I think the, the other thing that struck me is it's just such a powerful reminder of how much can change in a single generation. My mom is also on site here today. She's gonna kill me for aging her, but when she was born, human beings hadn't yet been to space. And when she was growing up, women weren't eligible. And now here she is watching her daughter prepare for a space flight of my own. You know, it just, it gives me a really day. Absolutely, you know, and the moon landing is what inspired Sir Richard Branson. And so who knows what, you know, Delta V watching today, what that's gonna inspire her to do and other people in her generation. It's so incredibly exciting. It is. And folks, this is just the beginning. Virgin Galactic is a venture as a, capital, uh, a catalyst. It's the start of a whole new space age, which is completely different from the one before. You know, space was something that was unattainable by all but a very small group of people. And it was a preserve of government agencies for national pride and this is totally different you know it's a it's the new space age which is you know for Kelly for Delta V for Chris for me it's for everybody and you know we're making it more accessible to the public so I know you know the full effect of what happened today will not be felt for some time but it will touch many generations to come now Chris you were aboard the ISS for about five months at one point right did the view out the window ever get old Gosh, no. Uh, at the end of my five months on the space station, we were getting back into our ship, just sort of like the crew returned today. And just before I got into my spacesuit, I went over to the window just to try and soak up uh, a little more of that incredible perspective. You know, the world is so generously beautiful. And, and you see it in a whole new way. You can see for thousands of miles in each direction. And you can see the curvature of our planet and the reality uh, of where we all live suddenly becomes part of who you are. And right up to the last second, I, I, you know, I was there at, with, with my nose print on the glass, you know, trying to, trying to not miss the magnificence of, of this entire experience. Yeah, and you took like thousands of photos up there too, right? I mean, yeah. does that even give you a glimpse of what it was like as a reminder to be up there? Is well, it I know the video today was a little glitchy, but we've got all the recorders on board. Yes, and absolutely. What the crew's going to have now, of course, is their own personal memories, and then the, the the way to sort of catalyze them again and be able to watch those videos and think about uh, of the the beauty of what they've been through through and, and let it sort of sink into who they are. And, and so, yeah, I, I took it really helped me now remember the richness of the experience. So it'll be great to see the videos that they recorded on board. Absolutely, and you know, that richness sticks with you too. And you, you have a TED Talk actually that you talked about, um, well, a lot of things, right? Overcoming fear, walking through spider webs. Um, <laughs> but also, you know, my favorite part of it was when you talked about seeing Earth from above and the transformation that it has on people. You know, we call it the overview effect that, you know, I really hope and I'm, I'm sure that our astronauts today experience. What was that like for you? Yeah, I, I've been so lucky to see the world from that point of view and as one of the very first human beings to, to have the responsibility and the privilege of being up there. And, and to have a vehicle like Virgin just put up today that, that is allowing more eyes than just my two to see it, to, to understand not just the geology of the world, but, but us on it, you know, all seven billion of us and 
you know, we're, we're on board this little spaceship of Earth, and you can actually get a, a palpable sense of that from on board the ship. And, and uh, the crew of, of you know, Unity, their 22nd flight here today, um, they now have that inside of them. And, and all the subsequent crews, Kelly, when you fly as well, you're gonna have a chance to sort of shift your permanent perspective of how all this works. Go from being a two-dimensional human to now suddenly really understanding the three dimensions and what this planet truly looks like. And, and, and it's, it's gonna do us all good. As many people can see that as possible. Absolutely, and you know, Kelly, I know you're gonna be conducting a lot of experiments on board while you fly with Virgin Galactic, but I hope you're taking some time to look out the window and enjoy that too, right? I'm gonna have to carefully choreograph precious time at that window just to soak it in and enjoy the moment and be in the moment. Definitely, and you know, while we're waiting for our crew to disembark now, can you actually tell us a little bit about your experiments? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm gonna be flying healthcare and fluid experiments um, on board my research flight. The first one is the AstroSkin. It's a wearable sensor system designed to monitor how spaceflight affects the human body. The cool thing about it is the Astro Skin is currently worn on board the International Space Station by astronauts, but my flight will be the first time that we're collecting data during launch, reentry, and landing. So I'm really excited to contribute to some novel data collection for the next generation of astronauts. Uh, another experiment I'm flying is a fluid experiment designed to evaluate the behavior of liquid in a confined environment in microgravity. That's also gonna be fun because I'm gonna be interacting with a fluid cell that has a camera attached to it and data collected from that experiment can help inform you know, new technologies related to life support systems or novel designs for syringes for administering medicine in space. So I'm very excited for the opportunity to take my payloads with me to space. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that's so cool. Um, I am hearing that our our um, chief medical officer, Tara Castleberry, is approaching the vehicle now, and they are going to do a medical debrief with the crew. Uh, so we'll see that here momentarily. And our crew is actually going to join us later in the broadcast where they will receive their astronaut wings. So, Chris, I'm sure you have a vivid memory of the day you received your wings. Yeah, wings things that we wear on our chest, they're, they're a measure of, of a lifetime of work and purpose and, and personal accomplishment. And, and all of the different organizations, of course, have their own wings. But when I flew in space, it was the very that was on my chest. So uh, that that was a, a huge honor for me to have, you know, the Prime Minister of Canada to take these new wings that had minted to show a new human accomplishment, and then for me to have that as part of who I am for the rest of my life. And so it's a huge honor for me that that I'm going to be part of that ceremony for these folks that just flew down. I was just going to say, now you get to return yeah. that honor yeah. to the crew today. It's so exciting. And you have a really important role to help present those astronaut wings. So we're all looking forward to seeing that. Um, as our pilots and passengers prepare to wake, make their way back to spaceport, let's hear a little bit more about our special musical guest. Mm -hmm. 